Ancient Harbors of the Sea of Galilee Jesus spent much time on and around the Sea of Galilee with his fishermen disciples. These disciples, who gave up all to follow him, Luke 5 verse 11, were good sailors. They knew the lake and its harbors well. The Gospels often refer to their maritime activities and the harbors they used. Now, for the first time in recent history, information on the harbors used by Jesus and his disciples is coming to light. Sixteen harbors and anchorages have been identified and surveyed by Mendel Nunn, a fisherman from Kibbutzin G.E.V., Nunn 1989a. I am deeply indebted to him for sharing his wealth of knowledge concerning the lake and its history. In this article I will discuss some of the lake's ancient harbors and their implications for gospel geography. Five geographical problems will be examined. First, the location of the calling of the disciples, Tabga, the fishing suburbs of Capernaum, Matifer, colon 18-22, Mark 1 verses 16-20, John 21 verses 1-17. Second, the location of the casting of the demons into the swine, Gadara, the Kibbutz Han Harbor, Matt 8 colon 28-34, Mark 5 verses 1-20, Luke 8 verses 26-40. Third, the location of the feeding of the 5,000, near the Aish Harbor, the probable fishing suburbs of Bethsaida in Galilee, Matt 14 colon 15-21, Mark 6 verses 32-44, Luke 9 verses 12-17, John 6 verses 1-14. Fourth, the feeding of the 4,000, Corsi, Matt 15 colon 32-39, Mark 8 verses 1 to 9. And finally, the location of Magdala slash Del Manutha, Matt 15 38, Mark 8 verse 10. The History of Research In the past, explorers have searched in vain for Sea of Galilee harbors from the New Testament period. They have been unsuccessful because two millennia of wind and wave action have eroded the harbor superstructures. Only the foundations remain, and they were, until recently, hidden beneath the water. Mendel Lund has determined that the water level of the lake varied between 209.5 and 210.5 meters below sea level in antiquity. In 1932, a dam was built at the southern outlet of the Jordan River allowing the maximum level to be controlled. It is normally maintained at minus 209 meters. With the recent drought, however, the level has dropped to a dangerously low minus 213 meters, none 1991, 10. Since one-third of all the drinking water for modern Israel comes from the Sea of Galilee, this is a serious problem. There could be adverse ecological effects as well. For those doing research on the antiquities of the lake, however, the drop has proven to be a boon. Many ancient harbors are now exposed for the first time in the modern era. The first ancient harbor to be found was at Corsi, on the eastern shore of the lake. Excavations were conducted here by the Department of Antiquities in the early 1970s. The harbor was discovered in an underwater survey carried out by S. Shapira and A. Rabin of the Society for Underwater Archaeological Research. During the ensuing summer, the water level dropped and the harbors became visible from shore, Safras 1983, Nun 1989 c. None has since surveyed the entire lake, documenting 15 additional ancient harbors and anchorages. We will consider several of these harbors as they relate to geographical problems in the Gospel narratives. Geographical Problems in the Gospel Narrative The Calling of the Disciples The first stop on our excursion around the Sea of Galilee is the Harbor of St. Peter, as Mendel Nunn has labeled it, 1989A 22-23. It is located just northeast of the Church of the Primacy of St. Peter in the area of Tabga, on the northwest side of the lake. Visible only when the water level falls to minus 211.50 meters, the harbor is comprised of two breakwaters. The first, 60 meters long, is parallel to the shore and curves to the entrance on the east side. The second, perpendicular to shore, is 40 meters long. Tabga, the corrupted form of Haptatagon, means seven springs. It is the winter fishing ground for fishermen from Capernaum, Pixner 1985-196-206. During the winter months its seven warm springs attract mushed, commonly called St. Peter's fish, to its shores. This would be the logical place for Peter and Andrew to have been throwing their cast nets during the winter of AD 28 when Jesus called them to become fishers of men, Matt 419, Mark 1 verse 17, more than a year after believing in him as Savior, John 2 verse 11. Several months later, after the Sermon on the Mount, 
the Lord had to recall Peter while he was washing his nets along the shore in the morning after a long, unproductive night of fishing. The springs would be an ideal place for this activity. Jesus got Peter's attention by a miraculous draft of fish. This was indeed a miracle because the net Jesus commanded Peter to let down was a trammel net. This type of net is used only at night and close to shore, Luke 5 verses 1 to 11, Nun 1989 b 28-40. The goodness of God led Peter to repentance. He confessed, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Following this experience, the disciples left all to follow him, Luke 5 verse 11. An early church tradition places Jesus' post-resurrection appearance to the disciples here at Tabga, John 21, Nun 1989 Bia 41-44. Casting the Demons Onto the Swine In Matthew 8, Mark 5, and Luke 8 we have the account of Jesus exercising demons from a man, or two men, Matt 828, who lived in a cemetery near the Sea of Galilee. The location of this event has been uncertain, Nun 1989 C. There is disagreement as to whether the text should read Jerjiza, Jeresa, or Gadara. Personally, I believe Mark 5 verse 1 and Luke 8 verse 26 should read Gadarenes and Matt 828 should be Jerjizines. Some have objected to these readings because Gadara, located at MKs about 6 miles southeast of the Sea of Galilee, is too far away to have a harbor on the lake. In 1985, as a result of the low water level, a harbor was discovered south of Tel Samra, now the campground of Kibbutz Han. It is the closest point along the lake shore relative to Umkays. What is more, the Kibbutz Han Harbor is the largest on the east side of the lake. Its outer breakwater is about 250 meters long, with a 5 meter wide base. The quay, or landing area, is approximately 200 meters long. There is also a 500 meter pier along the shore, Nun 1989 A 16-18. None surmises, one can only assume that a splendid harbor such as this did not serve a small population. It is much more likely that it once had been the harbor of Gadara, located on the heights of Gilead above the Yarmouk River, the largest and most magnificent of the Hellenistic towns that encircled the Sea of Galilee, 1989-A-17. Coins from Gadara depict boats commemorating the Nomachia, or naval battles reenacted by the people of Gadara. Several scholars have suggested that these battles took place on the Yarmouk River, Delman ND, 178-179. A more plausible setting is the Kibbutz Han Harbor. Here, there is sufficient room for maneuvering and the long pier would provide seating for spectators. Recently, a Byzantine church was discovered at Tel Samra adjacent to the harbor, Nun 1989 AS 16. To whom or what was this church dedicated? Did it commemorate the demoniac event? Assuming that the demoniac event took place at the harbor of Gadara, how does the geography fit the biblical text? Jesus and his disciples landed at the harbor and were met by a demon-possessed man who lived in tombs, Mark 5 verse 2, Luke 8 verse 27, Matt 8 28 says there were two demoniacs. That there were tombs here is attested by the discovery of three sarcophagi in the area. The demons requested that they be thrown into a herd of swine which were a good way off, on slash near the mountains, the Golan Heights, Matt 8.30, Mark 5 verse 11, Luke 8 verse 32. The swine then ran down a steep place into the sea and drowned, Matt 8.32, Mark 5 verse 13, Luke 8 verse 33. There are two possibilities as to where this event took place. The first is just behind Kibbutz Haon where a ridge coming down from the Golan Heights fits the description. The second is on the grounds of Kibbutz Mayagon, about a mile to the southwest. Located here is the only cliff which drops directly into the sea. After the demise of the swine, the predominantly Gentile population of the Decapolis pleaded with Jesus to leave their territory. One scholar has suggested that killing the pigs could have been an attack on the cultic practices of the Decapolis cities, Johnson 1989 49, 50. Jesus departed, but he left the delivered demoniac to proclaim the great things Jesus had done for him, Mark 5 verse 20, Luke 8 verse 39. Feeding the 5,000 In the spring of AD 29, just before Passover, Jesus performed the miracle of feeding 5,000 men, plus women and children with five barley loaves and two small sardines. At Tabga there is a mosaic commemorating this miracle. 
In addition, an early church tradition places the event at Tabga, Shenhab 1984, Pixner 1985. But, does Tabga fit the geographical data in the Gospels? The twelve were sent out to preach the Gospel to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Upon their return, probably to Capernaum, Jesus took them by boat to a deserted place, Matt 14 13, Mark 6 verse 32, which belonged to the city of Bethsaida, Luke 9 verse 10. The problem here is that there are two towns named Bethsaida. I believe this text refers to Bethsaida in Galilee, located at Tel El Arage on the north shore of the lake, Laney 1986 81 82. The other Bethsaida is Bethsaida Julius, one of the capitals of Gulenitis, which I believe to be located at El Mesidia, to the southeast of Tel El Arage. The multitude ran before the boat and arrived at the site of the feeding before Jesus and his disciples. There is no indication that they crossed the Jordan River, which would have been high due to the spring rains. Thus, the feeding of the 5,000 should be placed in Galilee, to the west of the Jordan River. I suggest it took place in the area of Moshav Almagor, between Capernaum and Bethsaida in Galilee, within the district of Bethsaida. After feeding the multitudes, Jesus sent his disciples by boat to Bethsaida, probably Julius. Just below Moshav Almagor, to the east of Ammon Bay, which is rich in sweet water springs, is an anchorage at Aish, or Kerbat Asha. It is located about one mile northeast of Capernaum and a little over one mile west of Bethsaida in Galilee. It had a 100-meter-long promenade built of large stones and two parallel breakwaters, 20 meters apart, extending into the lake, Nun 1989A23. It is likely that this was where the disciples' boat was moored during the feeding of the 5,000 and where they departed to the other side. Possibly Jesus was concerned for their safety. Herod Antipas would not have been pleased with the idea of making Jesus king of Israel, John 6 verse 15. The area of Moshav Almagor and the Aish Anchorage nicely fits the gospel descriptions of the feeding of the 5,000. Placing the miracle at Tabga was no doubt for the convenience of early pilgrims. As the disciples were crossing the lake, a violent winter windstorm swept down from the Golan Heights. It was on this occasion that Jesus walked upon the sea and calmed the wind, Matt 14 colon 25-32, Mark 6 verses 48-51, John 6 verses 19-21. Eventually they landed on the west side of the lake at the land of Genesaret, where they anchored in the harbor of Genesar, Nun 1989a23. The next day Jesus went to the synagogue of Capernaum about three miles away and gave his discourse on the bread of life, John 6 verses 22-71. Feeding the 4,000 The focus of Jesus' ministry changed after the feeding of the 5,000. Now, he wanted to spend time alone with his disciples. They traveled to Tyre and Sidon where they spent much time together. After ministering to the Syrophoenician woman, they departed from the region and came to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis, Mark 7 verse 31. There Jesus healed many, primarily Gentiles, for three days. As a result, they glorified the God of Israel, Matt 15 colon 29-31, Mark 7 verses 31-37. Toward the end of the third day the multitudes were fed with seven loaves of bread and a few small fish. Although we can be certain that the event took place on the east side of the lake, exactly where is another matter. Father Bargill Pixner places the event at Tel Hadar on the northeast shore of the lake. He has even set up a marker to commemorate the event. Tel Hadar, however, is in the region of Golanitis, north of the area of the Decapolis. The border between the Decapolis and Golanitis apparently was the Wadi Samak, Dalman and DU 170. I suggest that the feeding of the 4,000 took place at the Corsi Church, excavated in the 1970s, just south of the Wadi Samak. In fact, I believe the church was built to commemorate this event, rather than the casting of the demons into the swine as the excavators propose, Safras 1983 43-48, 1989-44-51, none 1989c. There are several reasons for this suggestion. First, as argued earlier, I believe the demoniac event took place at Gadara 8 miles to the south. Second, there is no indication from the mosaics on the floor of the church that it commemorated the demoniac event. Third, early church sources and pilgrim accounts, while stating that the demoniac event took place on the east side of the lake, do not give a specific location. 
Fourth, the mosaic provides a hint that this is where Jesus fed the 4,000. The church was built in the late 5th or early 6th century AD and lasted until the Persian invasion of AD 614 when it was destroyed. Approximately 60% of the mosaic floor survived the destruction. The central nave suffered the most. Except for some birds and animal medallions which were destroyed during an Islamic iconoclastic movement, the two side aisles are relatively intact. The side aisles were made up of 296 medallions containing various depictions. Vasilius Sapphirus, the excavator, describes them as follows, they, contained a variety of exotic and common birds, different types of fish, stylized flowers, plants, vegetables, harvest symbols and ceremonial objects. Within the row each motif was repeated four times. For the most part, the arrangement of the motifs alternated between rows of images such as birds, fish, everyday objects, or plant motifs, 1983-24. What interests me the most are the fish, 1983, plate 11-1. Although they have been partially destroyed, none has identified them as barbel fish, 1989-C-24. The gospel narratives state that the fish involved in this miracle were small fish, possibly the sardines for which the Wadi Samak is noted. There are also baskets in the mosaics, Sapphiris 1983, plate X5. They have handles as did those in the gospel account. One basket is similar to the one on the mosaic floor at Tabga. To the southeast of the church, on the slopes of Wadi Samak, is an ancient tower. According to the excavator, this is the Chapel of the Miracle of the Swine, Sapphiris 1983 49-51. Some have suggested it was built over the tombs in which the demoniacs lived. Nothing in the chapel, however, indicates to whom or what it was dedicated. It could just as well have been dedicated to the healing events which took place prior to the feeding of the 4,000. Matthew tells us that Jesus went up on the mountain and sat down there, 1529. Corsi, interestingly enough, means chair, a place for sitting down. For the convenience of pilgrims, the chapel was placed only a little ways up the slope of the mountain. After feeding the 4,000 people, Jesus and his disciples went to Delmanutha slash Magdala on the west side of the lake. Some 300 meters to the west of the church is a small, 2.5-acre, site named Tel Corsi. North of Tel Corsi are the remains of an ancient harbor. Its breakwater curves for 150 meters and has a holding tank for fish, with an aqueduct for bringing fresh water from the Wadi Samak, Nun 1989A at 20 21. This would have been the barber from which Jesus left to go to Magdala. Location of Magdala slash Delmanutha Magdala is located about 3 miles northwest of modern Tiberias. Remains of a harbor have surfaced here, Nun 1989A at 20 21. It consisted of two parts, an open dock for loading and unloading during the summer, and a basin, within a 70-meter breakwater to protect the ships from the winter storms. Mark's Gospel calls the area the region of Delmanutha. How is this to be understood? It has been suggested that Delmanutha is a transliteration of the Syriac word for harbor, Laney 1986-85. Magdala, also known as Terakia, was noted as a place for salting fish. Possibly it got its nickname, the harbor, because fishermen brought their sardines here for salting. Josephus records that there were many ships at Magdala, 230 or 330 depending on which account you read, Wars 2.635-637, during the Battle of the First Jewish Revolt. He also hints that one of the other industries in the area was shipbuilding. The nickname could also derive from this activity. In recent years, two important discoveries have been made at Magdala. In February 1986, the now famous 1st century AD boat was found in the harbor. The boat has been variously called the Jesus boat, the Disciples boat, or the Josephus boat. It is now on display at Kibbutz Janasser, Watchman 1988-18-33, 1990. Secondly, a 1st century AD synagogue has been excavated near the town square by the Franciscans, Corbo 1983 355-378, Strange and Shanks 1983 Perhaps this is the place where the Pharisees and Sadducees came to seek a sign from heaven from Jesus, Matt 16 1-4, Mark 8 verses 11-13. Conclusions 
Jesus and his disciples traveled the Sea of Galilee by boat, going from one harbor to another. Recent climatic conditions have resulted in the exposure of many ancient harbors around the lake. This has given scholars fresh data with which to resolve old problems. The harbor at Tabga confirms that fishermen from Capernaum fished there during the winter months. The harbor at Gadara, Kibbutz Han, adds credibility to the reading of Gadara in the Gospel narratives. Light is shed on the term Del Manutha, harbor, as a result of new finds at Magdala. Finally, I have set forth two new proposals. First, the feeding of the 5,000 took place near Moshav Almagor with the disciples departing from the Aish harbor. Second, the Corsi church has been misidentified. Rather than being the place where Jesus cast the demons into the swine, I believe it to be the place where Jesus fed the 4,000. For the last 2,000 years, pilgrims and tourists have been attracted to the Sea of Galilee to worship, understand and appreciate the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. I trust these ideas will serve to draw us closer to Him, encourage us to walk in His footsteps and be more like Him, day by day.